So the structures that we've looked at with the plant and animal cell, we know about these primarily through the light microscope, also known as a compound microscope, because we have two lenses. We've got the eyepiece lens here, and then you've got an objective lens here, and you can normally select one of three lenses. Quite often they are a times four, a times 10, and a times 40 magnification. And usually the eyepiece lens has a magnification of times 10. Well, that's not written in stone. I I've got a couple in my school which are times six on the eyepiece. I say that because what they're likely to ask you to do with the microscope, apart from obviously the practical aspects, which we'll look at in a minute in terms of what you actually do in class, but you'll be asked to calculate the magnification of a cell or a tissue or a sample that you're looking at, which you place on the stage there. To work out the magnification is quite simple. It's whatever the eyepiece lens is multiplied by the magnification of whichever objective lens that you've chosen. So for example, if this is 10 and I've selected the 40 magnification on the objective lens, it would be 10 times 40, so I've got a magnification of 400. Okay, I've, I put a note there by the way, because my artistic skills weren't good enough to draw a lamp or a mirror there. I tried it a couple of times and it just wasn't happening for me, so I left it out. Okay, but there would normally be that there. So what you're gonna be doing, and it is a specified practical, what that means is you've got to cover at some point, you'll have to make a slide either from onion skin or using your own cheek cells. And you've got to be able to prepare this and view it and then draw it in the, the lab setting. OK, so the trickiest bit for me is always trying to peel the onion skin from there, trying to get just one layer. Because if you get multiple layers, when you view this on the slide, the cells will overlap and it just becomes very, very confusing. So if you do manage to get that fiddly bit done, you would then lay that flat. And that's easier said than done, by the way, without any crinkles or wrinkles in it. You would then add a drop of iodine. Now, for plant cells, we use iodine, not always. But the idea is the iodine will actually stain and bind to certain parts of the cells and tissue, which will make them much, much easier for you to see when you come to look at them through the microscope. The cover slip, a very, very thin layer of glass, you would actually put down, and I would recommend you sort of roll it from left to right to try and squish out any air bubbles. Because what I've had before now, you get some, if you just put it down flat, you get some sort of weird bubbles appearing on the slide like this. And when students look at them through the microscope, they start thinking that these are cells, when in actual fact they're, you can, you can tell that very dark outlines and sort of perfectly round. But I've had students sort of draw these and, and think they're drawing plant cells, which they're not. Okay, so you're gonna to have to carry up their prac. If you do the cheek cells prac, it'd be the same one. You take a scraping of your own cheek cells, you dispose of the cotton buds you'd probably use to do that in some disinfectant. You would wipe the cotton bud on the slide. You'd use a different stain, methylene blue, cover slip down, and you'd view it through the microscope. Okay, so when you're using the microscope, you put the slide on the stage. I'd always put it on the lowest setting to start with, on the times four, if that's what you've got. And then I'd use the coarse focus. You would normally have a, a larger focus there and a smaller one for the fine focus, which would be there somewhere. And I would find it on its lowest setting and I then turn it up to the middle setting and you know it's not going to be far away then. If you can view it on the lower setting, when you turn the, the objective lens to the next higher setting, it should be very easy to find the image that you're looking for before finally turning to the highest setting you can. And what you'd be asked to do probably is to draw the cells that you're looking at. Now don't try and draw all of them. I would just recommend you draw three or four of those cells and try and label the parts that you can see. Now looking back, you're not gonna see all of these parts. You'll probably only be able to get the cell wall and the nucleus maybe. I mean, if you see more than that, you're doing really well. And it depends on the stains that you're using and how well you've prepared the slide. But you certainly won't see the mitochondria. So don't draw them um, because obviously they're not there. So you can only draw what is there, okay? Now, the issue that we have with a light microscope 
is the resolution. So resolution is the ability to tell that two objects are in fact two objects. What I mean is, if you've got poor resolution, there could be a membrane next to another, an inner membrane, but when you view it through a light microscope, it will just look like one thick line. You won't be able to discern that there's actually two parts there because the resolution isn't good enough. If we want to improve our resolution, we would use an electron microscope, which apart from being super expensive, when you prepare a sample for an electron microscope, you've actually got to coat the sample with a heavy element such as gold, which will obviously kill the sample or kill the cells that you're looking at. So it's a double-edged sword there. You improve the resolution. You can really see vast detail, superb detail of an electron microscope. But in doing so, you're not going to be able to view living cells. So the light microscope, certainly for our purposes, is all we need. And that's going to give us the, the resolution that we need to look at the samples that we're looking at. Okay. Now, we, previously we've looked at plant animal cells. And you must understand that those cells is a general cell trying to represent the parts that you find in lots. I mean, the, the cheek cell, for example, you could look at, does look just like that cell there, not with the weird colors that I put on, by the way. Um, and palisade cells in a leaf do look like the general animal cell that we've drawn. In reality, though, most cells differ from that general cell. They're specialized to carry out their task. And I've, I've put four examples here. It's not mentioned in the spec exactly which examples you should look at, but these are fairly common ones. So you've got a sperm cell, which has this bit at the top, this cap called an acrosome containing enzymes, which will help, help it digest its way into an egg. It's got lots of mitochondria to provide energy through aspiration uh, to enable the tail to move for it to swim. The root hair cell, if I was to talk about how this is specialized, Look how its shape differs. It's got a much bigger surface area as a result of that structure. And that means a bigger surface area means it can absorb. It's got a bigger area to absorb the, the water and the nutrients that it's going to need. More of this later when we look at active transport, by the way. A fat cell. We've got this fat store in the middle, a vastly reduced cytoplasm to allow room for that. And a nerve cell. We have a, uh, a myelin, a, a fatty covering, which will insulate the signal and enable the signal to pass much more quickly. Um, we've got the, the sort of structure that enables it to, to pass messages along. OK, so there's four examples. If we're lucky in the exam, you could be asked about one of those four. If we're unlucky, they won't. What you've got to do is whatever example they give you, look at the size, the shape, the surface area of the cell, and they normally give clues in the, the label diagram that they give you, and try and work out what is the job of the cell that I'm looking at, and how is its structure suited to that task and helpful for that task. Um, as I said, we could look at 20 different examples, and they might not come up in the exam. So... I've just given you four here for you to have a little look at. It'd be a good idea to maybe look at a few more to look up your own. But if you're talking about specialised cells, if they ask you to describe a specialised cell, then describing any one of these, I would actually suggest that a sperm cell is probably the easiest one to discuss because we've got very three very clear specialisms that are very suited to its task. Okay. And if I just go back to the specification statements you can see there part c the differentiation of cells in multicellular organisms to become adapted for specific functions specialized cells so we've gone through four of those and then finally this longer statement which is not much to it at all simply to be aware that cells organize themselves or cells that are the same get organized into tissues with a similar function uh, they, different tissues can form organs to carry out a specific function and those organs are organised into organ systems and then all of those systems make the whole organism. So if I go to my final slide for this video, you can see there again my, my art skills are just off the wall at the moment. 
um, but we've got a, a cardiac muscle cell. Um, so we've got shared nuclei between lots of cells there. Um, one cell, lots of those together form a cardiac muscle or tissue. Lots of different tissues, not just cardiac muscle, but lots of others involved as well, form the organ, which in this case is the heart. And then the heart, along with other organs, make up the circulatory system, which is an organ system. Okay, so we could have chosen, a, with a case of plants, a palisade cell, palisade layer, making the leaf, making the photosynthetic system and, and all the structures involved in, in carrying that carrying that out. So it's an awareness that cells form tissues, tissues form organs, and organs form an organ system. And you could even add on the end that the organ systems form the whole organism. Okay, so we've got the circulatory system, the digestive system, the reproductive system, the muscular system, all of those work together to make the whole organism. And we could even add some hours just to show the way in which it's it's done. Common question, they'll give you examples and ask you to place them into the correct order from smallest to largest, perhaps something like that. Or they could give you a more open-ended question, describe um, how cells are organized inside a, a, an organism. And I, I think the circulatory system is a pretty good example that you could use.